Hello, uh, this lecture is just to introduce some of the basics of the class, what I would talk about on the first day uh, if we were face to face. So first, let me say, since this is online, more of the onus is put on you in order to look after what you need to do. You're not going to get constant reminders from me of what you need to do. So make sure you look very carefully at that schedule at the end of the syllabus that tells you absolutely everything that is due in this class and when. If I were you, I would print out that syllabus, the schedule at the end of the syllabus, and tape it to the wall uh, wherever it is that you do your work at your desk or whatever you have at home. Okay, so let me give you some idea of what to expect. So there are readings and there are lectures. Um, both of these are required. Uh, you should be doing all of the readings and watching all of the lectures. Um, all the lectures are made available to you right up front, and all the readings, of course, are available in the book. I want to make clear, though, for the readings, you should read uh, the philosophers that we're reading. If the editor of the book writes a brief introduction or something, that is not assigned, and you should not base your understanding on that material. So we're reading, for example, Aristotle, and not the editor of this book's introduction where they describe something about Aristotle. So you have to show me you understand the assigned text, not uh, what the editor says about things. If you show me you understand what the editor says, that doesn't count for anything in this class. There are quizzes, uh, many quizzes over the course uh, of this class, and those you should take after you have done the reading and watched the lectures. So here's what I suggest you do. First, go through the reading, and when you read it, take notes. If you haven't received any instruction up to this point on what it means to take notes, you have your notebook next to you and write down what you understand from the reading. Put it in your own words. It's not just a matter of recording information so you can look at it later, although it does do that. It's a matter of internalizing it. When you put it in your own words, that's what gets you to understand it. If you don't write it down in your own words, you won't really have assimilated uh, the material at all. So. Write down what you understand. Try to make summaries. If you read through a whole section or a few pages, write down what these pages seem to have been about. What does the uh, philosopher's main point seem to be? What arguments are offered to justify it? Any questions you have, all those things should go into your notes. That's how you really understand the material. So read, take those notes, then watch my lectures, take notes on the lectures. In my lectures, I organize the material for you. Uh, based on all these headings, so that should help you organize it, and then go and take the quiz. Um, and as you're going through all of the readings and watching all of the lectures, you should also keep in mind what big assignments are coming up. So look at what the discussion question is or what the exam or paper questions are, and keep those in mind as you're going through the material so you can prepare your uh, assignment from the very beginning. That's the way to really succeed in this class. Uh, if you try to just do the assignment at the, at the end, maybe you'll do okay, maybe you won't, but that's not what I recommend for you to do. Work on it the entire time as you're doing each reading. So there are discussions um, and their exam, or sometimes I call it a paper. Um, so in this class, I think I called it a paper. So I want to know what the discussions, there are two deadlines because you have your initial post and then you have a dialogue post um, where you respond to another student. And so if you just go by Canvas dashboard, which is what many students seem to want to do, it's only going to tell you one of the deadlines. And so I made that the deadline for the initial post, but then you need to go back in and respond to another student, which is your dialogue post. All the details of how you should do this are available to you uh, in the syllabus and a document called Guide to Philosophical Writing, both of which you should read very carefully. But if you don't make sure you go back in and submit a dialogue post, you lose a large number of points. Uh, check the syllabus to see exactly how much it is. Check the rubrics. But you would lose. It would it would really uh, drastically affect your grade. So make sure you submit both and you submit them on time because no late work is accepted for anything in this class. So beware of relying on Canvas dashboard, as I said. Rely on the syllabus uh, schedule at the end. Uh, yeah, so... Um, when you have your paper, that's what I mean by the exam here, the, the modern philosophy paper, work out the, your answers to each prompt in advance um, for at the end of the semester. And then uh, you'll be asked 
uh, you'll have a, a 48 hour window to open, uh, to open that paper assignment. And then you'll see randomly which one of those prompts you have to answer. So you need to have all of them prepared. And then at that point, you'll have five minutes to submit it. So that's not enough time for you to write out the whole thing. And that's, I did that deliberately to make it so that you work on every single prompt. Um, so don't take the chance that like you're only going to get one, the one prompt that you studied for, that you wrote out a response for. Work out your response to every single one for that modern uh, philosophy paper assignment. Okay. So again, this is not meant, this video is not meant to substitute for you reading through the syllabus. Read through the syllabus very carefully and the document called Guide to Philosophical Writing. I already have a lecture also posted on the for, about the format I expect, but you need to adhere to that. It's very important. And um, what I mean by this, take responsibility, is you need to be responsible for your grade in this class. Some students uh, are very responsible, but some I think have not really been expected to take responsibility uh, in a way that you should up to this point uh, before coming to college. So you need to know what is due and you need to know how you need to do it before it's due. Uh, after the assignment is already due, it's too late to go back and make changes. You can't redo your work in this class. You can't submit work late. So if you have a question about anything, you need to ask me beforehand. Um, if you wait until the assignment is due, it's too late. So you need to be an adult, take responsibility for yourself in this class. Okay, um, <clears throat> here's our book, Classics of Western Philosophy. It's by Hackett Publishing. I say you should buy the most recent edition. If you want to check earlier editions and they have the readings that, we, that are required for this class, then that's fine. Uh, if you can get an earlier edition for cheaper, if it has all the readings that we need, I don't really know, uh, but that's up to you if you want to check. You might be able to get it cheaper. There are two readings in this class at the end of the semester that are not included in the book, but they're available for free online, and that's on the Canvas site. Um, <clears throat> now, in the book, as I was saying, you are not expected to demonstrate you understand what the editor says. I don't care about that. You need to show you understand the assigned reading, Plato, Aristotle, etc. So make sure that you focus on that. And do not just Google the material. Um, I'm very uh, skilled at identifying plagiarism. If you just Google Plato or something like that or Aristotle and you use that in your, uh, in your assignments for this class, you are very likely to fail this class. Just read the material on your own, do your best, watch my lectures, take careful notes, talk to me if you have questions, don't look elsewhere. I'm the one who's going to help you understand it. If you're not understanding it, come to me. Don't go to Google uh, or you risk uh, failing because you plagiarized on one of these assignments. So if you're ever curious about what plagiarism is, the college has documents. I put things in the syllabus and you can ask me, but um, you should be aware that uh, there is absolutely no tolerance for plagiarism in this class. Uh, there's no second chances. <clears throat> if you're caught, it's just a zero on the assignment as the minimum penalty. And I take this very seriously. Um, and lastly, let me just reiterate, take notes. Uh, you have to take notes in order to do well in this class. Uh, especially, you know, as an online class, you shouldn't take that as something that you shouldn't, you shouldn't take that to mean that you do not need to take your responsibilities lightly. You need to take them more seriously and take notes very carefully. And in an online class, you're able to pause the video, which you wouldn't be able to in a face-to-face -face class. So take advantage of that. Um, when I make these videos, I'm very careful about how I make them. And then I expect you to understand absolutely everything in the video because you were able to pause it and you're able to watch it again and again and again. So you're responsible for knowing all of the stuff I put in these videos. Okay. And if you have questions after going through everything that I've given you, all the lectures, all the material I've given you, always you're welcome to ask me. Um, before you email me, tell me what class you're in because I'm always teaching several classes. Say, uh, you know, the, there's a five digit number. Say I'm in philosophy 101, for example, and then the five digit number of the course so that I can uh, best answer your question. But it's a good class. It'll be a wonderful class if you uh, put in the effort. You get out of it only what you put into it. So do your best in this class and it can be very beneficial uh, for your whole life.